Hello Magic Makers, welcome to Storytime with Mom Birilla. This is a young adult fiction and may be inappropriate for some younger viewers. Evil Thing A Tale of That DeVille Woman By Serena Valentino Copyright Disney Enterprises Incorporated 2020 Chapter 4 Part 3 it became a daily battle, and I found myself spending more time in the headmistress's office than in class. And really, she wasn't any help. She was just as insufferable as our nasty classmates and most of the instructors. I laugh at myself now, remembering a particular day when I received a summons to the headmistress's office. It was in Miss Babble's class when the note arrived, asking me to come to the office. All the girls in class looked very pleased with themselves. I don't think they could have been more pleased if they'd all received proposals from the richest man alive. So I knew they were up to something. Miss Babel, what is this about? I asked. I suggest you go to the headmistress's office and find out Miss Cruella, she said with a smug look on her face. Ever since the scene with Arabella, things in Miss Babel's class had been wretched. Those fools took every opportunity to say something wicked about Anita, and Miss Babel did nothing to stop them. Well, if it was a battle they wanted, I was prepared. I decided to make a detour before heading to her office in a quick pit stop at my room. I put on my jade earrings and fur coat. You know the ones which I speak of. I wanted to look the part if I was going to give the headmistress a piece of my mind. I wanted to look fabulous and imposing, like Mamma did when she was ticking someone off. Here to see Miss Upton again, Miss Corella asked the frumpy-looking woman sitting at the desk right outside the headmistress's office. Yes, that was our headmistress's name, Miss Upturn. I think she thought it was a posh name, but to me it sounded common, and it seemed all too fitting. What with all the time she turned her nose up at Anita, on the occasions we had been sent to her office, Miss Frumpy Pants let me into Miss Upturn's office. The headmistress was sitting at her desk, dressed in a plain but stately brown dress suit and had what looked to be a dead quail on her head, the feathers going every which way. It was a very unfortunate hat. And to make matters worse, it was very out of date, much like her dress. She made pretense of being busy when her assistant let me into her office and directed me to stand near the chair across from her desk. Miss Upton kept me standing there, while her beady little eyes darted around her desk, like a deranged bird looking for something to do. She didn't even bother to look at me. I could tell she was putting off speaking with me as long as she could, barely an in-between. Finally, she looked up at me. Miss Cruella, it has been brought to my attention that you are causing quite the disturbance in Miss Babble's class, she said, looking at me with her two small, two round eyes. She really was a startling sight. Yes, Miss Upton, the other students have been horrible to Anita. And Miss Babble does nothing about it. And she refuses to call on Anita in class. I don't understand why she insists on ignoring her. She's the only student in our class who actually has something valuable to share. And who has taken the time to actually read her assignments, I said. The quill wobbled on Miss Upton's head as she sighed. It would have made me laugh if I hadn't seen the look of disgust on her face when I mentioned Anita's name. That made me dislike the woman even more. Honestly, Cruella, I don't understand your fascination with that girl. You have been to this office countless times, all on account of her. She is beneath you in every way. I frankly don't understand what you see in her. An education here will only take Anita so far. Do you understand what I'm telling you? I'm sure you two were very close in childhood, and it's wonderful to have such friends when you're young. But it's time you understand. You will both be in very different social circles. Once you are entered into society, you will eventually go your own way, and I hate to see you discount and alienate the girls who share your social standing, because those are the young ladies you will be spending time with in social situations, not Anita. Anita is my best friend, and a very good friend of my family's. I would hate my mother to find out how poorly she's being treated by you and your staff, not to mention how you let the students mock her. I'm not sure how everyone found out about Anita's lack of circumstances. But that should have no bearing on her getting the education her guardians are paying for her to receive. Well, Miss Cruella, it was your mother who informed me of Anita's circumstances, 
and while she indulges your friendship to a point, she wanted Anita to be reminded of her place. Your family has been so generous in their endowments. To our school, Miss Corella, I thought the least I could do was honor your mother's request. I was shocked, but I didn't blink. While I am aware of my mother's concerns, Miss Upturn, I would suggest that you speak with your staff and make it clear that Miss Anita is to be treated with respect, or I will personally see to it that this school no longer receives those endowments. <laughs> Miss Upton laughed under her breath, making the bird on her hat wobble again. It was all I could do, not to burst out laughing. Clearly, she didn't realize my situation, and taking a page out of my mother's book, I took control of the conversation, before she could elaborate on her laughter. This school is ridiculous, honestly. The idea of inferiors like you and your staff instructing me how to conduct myself in social circles that quite frankly would never permit you makes me laugh. How dare you look down your nose at Anita? All it will take is one phone call to my solicitor and the endowments will cease. I took Sir Huntley's calling card out of my handbag and placed it on her desk. You may, of course, confirm all of this with Sir Huntley, if you wish. Now, if you will excuse me, Miss Upton, I have some letters to write and calls to make before I start packing for winter break. Miss Upton sat there, dumbfounded. Godsmacked is a better word. She was speechless, staring at the card, while the bird on her head stood stock still, staring at me. I had achieved my purpose. I only wished I had the courage to do it sooner. I felt so powerful in that moment, wearing the earrings my papa had given me, and the lovely coat mamma insisted I take along with me to school. I understood in that moment that I got my power from looking my best, just like my mamma. I couldn't wait to tell Anita all about it. I turned to walk out of the room, but Miss Upton's voice stopped me. I'm sorry for any misunderstanding, Miss Cruella. Of course I will see that the staff treats Miss Anita with more respect. You can be assured of that. I didn't bother turning around when I answered. I simply said, see that you do. So you won't be making that call to your solicitor then, Miss Cruella? She asked, her voice sounding very small and not at all like her usual imposing self. I glanced back over my shoulder and added, No, Miss Upton, not while Anita is treated with respect. I don't expect I will have to. And then I smiled at the woman, taking delight in twisting the screw a little further. Oh, and Miss Upton, I'll see that my solicitor includes a little something extra for you. With our next endowment, might I suggest that you use it to buy yourself a new hat? Then I swished my fur coat around me, as I had seen my mother do countless times, and I dramatically exited the office. I was magnificent. I'm not embarrassed to say I was very proud of myself that day. I not only stood up for my best friend, but I devised a way to make sure she would be treated fairly from that point forward. Of course, Miss Upton turned out to be right in the end. I was young, and I let my childhood love blind me. I didn't see Anita back then as I do now. Anita and I sat in our room and laughed together when I told her about my talk with Miss Upton. Oh, Anita, you should have seen the look on her face. She was trembling in fear and anger. I thought that hat was going to fall right off her head. But you didn't really tell her to get a new hat, did you? asked Anita, scandalized, but laughing despite her sweet nature. I did. Isn't it a blast? We both laughed so hard. We annoyed the girls in the room next to us, but I didn't care. They were all horrid creatures. None of them had the sort of money my family did. Who were they to turn their noses up at Anita and me? If anyone was going to be looking down on anyone, it was going to be me looking down on them. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you haven't had a chance to, please take a second, like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, comment down below, share with a friend, and check out some of the other villain series chapters and books as well. Join us next time. And remember, let it go and keep moving forward. Have a magical day. Bye.